When you ask someone what they think the worst wood coaster in the world is, Bandit at Movie Park Germany is one of the rides that's frequently named. This is RCCA's take on the classic Coney Island Cyclone layout. I've ridden this ride a few times, including the very back row. So is it as bad as people say? Find out in this review. The Roller Coaster Corporation of America, or RCCA, is now infamous for making some of the worst wood coasters ever, both from a comfort and structural standpoint. Their rides all became rough shortly after opening, and worse, some had major structural deficiencies. The company only made seven roller coasters in its lifetime, and over half of those have closed, but you can still find two of them in Europe. Wild West Express opened back in 1999 during Warner Brothers' ownership of this park. The ride was named after the western film of the same name. After the park was sold to Star Parks and renamed Movie Park Germany in 2004, the ride was renamed Bandit. The ride is fittingly placed in the Old West section of the park, and I think this ride's presentation is pretty good. The ride's lift hill serves as a nice backdrop for the Old West area. Then the entrance, queue line, station building capture that western vibe between the architecture and theming. And you may be spending quite a bit of time in there. This is one of the park's most popular rides, posting a 30 to 45 minute wait in both my visits. Part of that is because this ride has run just one train in both my visits, but part of that is the ride's genuine popularity. Germany has nearly 250 different roller coasters, but only 5 made of wood, and the oldest of the bunch is surprisingly bandit. So believe it or not, this is actually a nostalgic ride for some locals. They don't get to ride too many woodies. The train is pretty long for a wood coaster though. It's comprised of 5 cars, and each car consists of 3 rows of 2, so each train can hold a maximum of 30 riders per cycle. And the employees thankfully check the restraints pretty quickly, so the line does move at least at a steady rate. Bandit originally had Intamin trains, but the current ones are from Premier Rides. As much as I love that company's launch coasters, Premier does not make the best coaster trains, especially when they're for coasters they did not originally design. Just look at what happened with Goliath at Six Flags New England. On the bright side, the Premier restraints are comfortable. They're a similar U-shaped lap bar to what you find in Premier's older launch coasters like Mr. Freeze. On the downside, these Premier trains don't seem to track properly. They bounce and shimmy throughout the layout. I have no doubt part of that is the RCCA track work, but the trains certainly do not help. As for the best seat, I think Band is about equally as good in the front or back car. Just avoid sitting in row 3 of either car if you want a smoother ride. Those wheel seats can be particularly nasty in two spots on this ride. Bandit begins with a slow turn out of the station, and then you climb the 91 foot or 28 meter tall lift hill. The lift is actually pretty darn fast, and you get a nice view of the park off to your right. You're actually thrown over the drop with a considerable amount of speed, but it's not profiled correctly to give airtime. The first pullout dishes some pretty bad jackhammering though. That's evident in any POV. Next is a large turnaround. You get some weak laterals up front as you're pushed into the turn. Then the train slowly screeches through the rest of it. This is followed by a large camelback. If you're up front, you'll actually get some weak floater airtime here. Then everyone is treated to another dose of extreme jackhammering on the subsequent valley. You then head through another large turnaround. Those up front get another small dose of laterals into the element and then the train darn near stalls out. The drop off this turnaround is decent though. It heads into a sea of head choppers, and you get a little bit of air time in the back. The next camelback offers similarly great near misses as it's buried in the ride structure, and those in the front and back cars will actually get some weak floater air time here as well. The third turnaround continues the head choppers, but it has the same issues as the prior two turnarounds. The train burns off a ton of speed here, those up front again do get a pinch of laterals at least. Next is the best element on the ride, this kinked camelback. You get a really nice lateral jolt up front and some okay floater airtime. Those in back skip the laterals, instead getting decent sustained floater airtime in the descent. The pullout has another sweet head chopper and then you soar over a speed hill. You just get a faint bit of float on the front on this element. The fourth turnaround is even slower than the prior ones. At this point, Bandit starts to get even jostlier, but the lack of speed is a form of mercy. The train bounces and bobs, but you're not moving fast enough to cause pain. The next bunny hill is another one full of head choppers, but it's devoid of airtime. 
Bandit then has one final turnaround that you barely make it through before you slam to a stop on the final brakes. You then roll back into the station, ending the 3,606 foot or 1,100 meter long coaster. So the million dollar question, just how painful is this ride? To be honest, not nearly as bad as its reputation would suggest. I mean, I came off my ride in the very back row smiling, although maybe I just have a higher roughness tolerance because the guy next to me looked like he was passing a kidney stone. The first pullout and the one right before the second turnaround are bad, and the train is moving fast enough to cause some legitimate discomfort here. But the rest of the ride is tolerable if you avoid a wheel seat or the very back of a car. Most of the shimmying occurs when the train is moving slowly, either on the turnaround or that final lap, so in a way it's more comical than painful. My biggest gripe with the coaster is the pacing. This ride is sluggish with a capital S. The original Coney Island Cyclone has some fantastic airtime and legendary laterals. You simply do not have enough speed here to get the laterals or airtime in this layout, and I know that layout is capable of doing it if done correctly. So what would I rate Bandit? I would give this coaster a 3 out of 10. Bandit is not good, but it's not one of the world's worst coasters. The ride genuinely looks good with that western theme, and there's a pinch of airtime and laterals to be had. Most importantly, this ride isn't excessively brutal. There are only one or two really bad spots in my opinion. I think that's part of the reason locals still enjoy this ride despite its reputation in the coaster community. My biggest issue with this ride honestly is the poor speed and pacing, more than the roughness. If you want to see what a truly bad RCCA coaster looks like, travel to Spain and try Parque Warner Madrid's Coaster Express. So what should Movie Park Germany do with Bandit? The coaster enthusiast in me wants to see this ride RMC'd. We already know RMC can do a lot with a cyclone layout. Six Flags Over Georgia converted Georgia Cyclone into Twisted Cyclone. It's a short hybrid conversion, but it packs a punch and it's one of the best rides in that park now. And an RMC hybrid would easily become the best coaster at Movie Park Germany. It would give the park the world class coaster they need to stand out in the enthusiast community. But on the other hand, I cannot deny this ride is genuinely popular with most park goers as is. For a lot of the RMC conversions, the converted woodies had dwindling riderships and were among the least liked coasters in their respective parks. The same cannot be said about Bandit. Therefore, I get why this ride may not be converted anytime soon, even though it's what I'd personally prefer to see happen. So those are my thoughts on Bandit Movie Park Germany. What are your thoughts on this ride? Do you think it's one of the worst coasters in existence? Or do you fall somewhere else on the spectrum where you think it's simply lackluster or actually good? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.